What is up everyone? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Nico. I go by Corn Trick and Corn Trick Twitch online, and eventually I will master the English language. If you're wondering what this is, you you're not gonna need this to do what we're doing today. I just happen to have a lot of PVC lying around, so this is what this contraption looks like. I'll go over some of the elemental components of stuff that you need, and then I'll explain what exactly I have here in front of me. So you're gonna need something to juice. Uh, a hand juicer will work, but it's not gonna work for everything. Like, you can't really juice an apple through that. So you're gonna need some sort of like masticating juicer, which is what this is. Yes, I said masticating. Uh, you put the fruit in the top, it chews the fruit up here, the pulp goes out this way, the juice comes out that way. Uh, so you, you'll see me juicing 20 pounds of apples, 20 pounds of pineapples, and 20 pounds of blueberries. You don't need to be doing this fresh. I can, and I thought this would be super duper fun. And it's an easy, it, it's easier for me to fill four hours of content when I have to do something like this. So I don't know if it's gonna work. Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, this whole process is gonna take that much longer and we might not be able to finish all four of these. You're gonna need something to juice your stuff, uh, something to hold your the juice itself, something to, to heat it like a heating vessel. Uh, you really only need one that's about a gallon or maybe even just a half gallon. Some heating top, this is an induction top, so this has to be stainless steel, but if you're doing this in a kitchen, you could just use your stove. Um, something to weigh, uh, weigh stuff, you guys can't see that. Uh, a scale, like this one right here. Uh, this one does a bunch of different units. Thermometer, this is a digital thermometer that I bought today because I was tired of using, oh, is it magnetic? Wow, that was really anti-climate. Is it magnetic? No, not at all. Uh, I recommend having some sort of sit, uh, like colander. This isn't exactly a colander. A fine mesh strainer. Uh, and then these are all uh, toppings for these. So it's basically the burp valves that'll go on top of the um, the glass carboys over there. And these are all one gallon. So we're making four one gallon batches of cider uh, that should be ready to drink in about two to four weeks. Today, what I'm testing is I'm using an existing recipe for uh, apple cider. I'm removing the spices from it. And I'm going to see how close I can get to something palatable by substituting the apples with three other ingredients that have similar uh, acidity and similar concentrations of sugar. Hopefully they're good. And if they're not good, then we can always, making cider is, is relatively quick, especially compared to making beer and making mead. If the results are inconclusive, then I'm gonna go back and maybe I'll test it with different kinds of apples uh, next month or you know, so on and so forth. As far as ingredients go, you're gonna need really just like three or four main things. The fruit that you're fermenting primarily, uh, we don't need uh, any kind of like fermentation aid or any like yeast nutrient. Raisins happen to be a pretty uh, natural uh, yeast nutrient. Uh, you're gonna need yeast only if you're making hard cider. This is the only step that's different and it's the last thing that you do. If you're not making hard cider, then you can just make the juice, sweeten it, and it's good to go. If you're making hard cider, it has to go under fermentation. It's gonna be the last step that we do. So bear in mind, this is all gonna be non-alcoholic until literally the very last step. Uh, and then you're gonna need some sweetener as well because most of the fruit that you use isn't gonna have enough sugar uh, to ferment to the flavor that you want, which is also why I had to go with stuff that was very similar to apples in its sugar concentration. I believe that's about it for like the main ingredients that you need. Really, it's the volume of the juice that you get that's a little bit more important. But Google told me that, I think it was like 20 pounds of apples yields one a gallon of apple juice and that's that's pretty much what we need like always one of the main steps that I've skipped this time is Sanitizing stuff uh, all that that means is if you don't sanitize it you get wild yeasts and microbes that can get in there uh, They can kill some of the yeast that you already have or they'll compete with that yeast to create other kinds of uh, Esters and phenol compounds which basically create like aromas the things that you smell and really give your drink its taste the seeds do have some tannic content to them so they can make your your end product a little bit bitter but that's okay it's the same the same thing is true with the skins but i am trying to do this in as few steps as possible i will warn you guys if i'm doing something that could be done better at home but i'm like all the stuff that we do whenever i'm making stuff from scratch i try and make it in as few steps as possible because one i have a limited num amount of time when i'm live streaming and two uh, I want to show you guys that you can do it in fewer steps, you don't need to sanitize everything, and it'll probably still come out fine. 
Uh, that being said, when you're finished using everything, wash it. Sour apples like Granny Smith's are meant for baking, and then sweet apples are meant for eating. So these are uh, just red delicious apples. I wanted to use uh, gala apples, which are green, but they didn't have enough of those. This will probably be the live stream where I cut my fingers. All right, if we blow a fuse and uh, we lose the stream, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, here we go. I should also mention, uh, I've never made cider before. All right, moment of truth. Does the system work? That's gonna be annoying. Hey, there we go. You, may, you might be able to see it on camera too, if I move this. Yeah, you can see the juice going in there. Another thing I should mention about apples is a lot of store-bought apples will have a layer of wax on the outside. Uh, to get rid of that wax, basically, you can take some, um, any sort of solvent and then some salt, and you just gently uh, wash the outside of it. You can also just run them under hot water, or you could peel your apple. Probably make this whole process a lot more user-friendly, but again, that's another one of those extra steps that I'm trying to avoid. If this looks like a lot of work, it's because it is. Uh, I did mention in the beginning of the live stream, in case you all missed it, uh, you can use store-bought apple juice. Just make sure there are no preservatives. Uh, the preservatives will basically inhibit the sweetening and the fermentation if you're making hard cider. That's the yield from one, one bag of apples. You guys can't see it through there. This is going to take a very long time. In case anyone's wondering, like, this whole chamber is just filled with pulp. Jesus, that sounds terrifying. I think that's gonna be the ideal volume for now because I'm actually gonna to have to add a little bit of water to that also once I pitch the yeast over it. And before I pitch the yeast, I need to heat up about half of that and add brown sugar to it. Ye old faithful, the apple cider. Pound of brown sugar in here. It should be most of what's left in this bag. It should be. Let's put this back on the heat. But I think a lot of people assume that it, it requires a lot of patience and a lot of precision. One of the main reasons I do these, like showing you guys how to make stuff from scratch, is to show you that it can be done with fewer steps. And it can, it can be easy, it can be accessible, but wh even while I'm doing this, I'll typically explain, like, if I skip a step, like, uh, I didn't wash my apples, I'll explain to you guys, like, hey, if you're doing this at home, you may want to take another 30 seconds and just, like, take some salt and some, like, mineral water and, like, clean the outside of the apples to wash off the wax or peel your apples. All right, I think that's all the brown sugar dissolved again. This one I shouldn't need to top off with uh, raw apple juice, but maybe I will, we'll see. Ah, luckily it wasn't that hot. Perfect, I don't think I need to add any raw apple juice to that at all. We're halfway there. Well, we're halfway to activating the yeast, which is the last step before I put the burp valves on these guys and then put them in a cool, dark place. 